On this episode, join me for a walk around the pits at D1 Grand Prix Round 3 at Ebisu Circuit as I show you some of the cars there and the highlights of the event. All right, we don't have much time, so let's do a quick pit walk. If you can hear me. First car, Kawabata's Team Toyo Supra. So unlike the Supras that are on Daigo's team, this one runs Toyota V8 Twin Turbo with uh, some pretty cool pipe work. Uh, one popular accessory you see this weekend is uh, definitely the cooler box on the passenger seat for the driver's cool suits. Not necessary at every round, but definitely necessary this round. And the body kit on this car is by a company called Cool. It's a unique look compared to the other Supras which mostly run the Rocket Bunny kit. And it doesn't have too much of a V8 sound, but it still sounds pretty cool. It's round three today. Round two was yesterday. Here's our winner from yesterday, Kohashi 2JZS15. I'm part of the uh, Team Orange guys. The cars are white, they do say Ling Long, but if you look on the door jams, they are still orange. He's still got the center console in there and the standard dashboard wrapped in, uh, is that felt or? Oh, it's like suede. And the other Team Orange car, this is Suenagas. Similar setup to Kohashi's at the 2JZ. Tsunaga, fuel gauge, uh, interior. Uh, this 180 won the maintenance award yesterday. I think you can see why. It's uh, probably the prettiest car here. And probably the glossiest too. I don't think any other car is this shiny. If you didn't know, they do have a marked tyre rule in D1 Grand Prix. So all the tyres for the day are marked and inspected. And they only have a limited amount of tyres they're allowed to use. There's a bunch of rules, but I won't go into it, but uh, that's the way it works. And if you look on the front of the cars, they have a sticker, where is it? Which says, i got to try and find one. Which says what size tyre they are allowed to use depending on the weight of the car. There it is, look. So on this one, on Yamaguchi's S15, 285. So because it's over a certain weight, they have to use 285 series tires. And if it's under a certain weight, they're only allowed to use up to a 265 tire. Everyone's filming the girls. I want to film the four rotor. Here's the four rotor FDRX7 on the Amamiya team. They were talking about retiring this car after last season but it looks like they've gone for the uh, option of putting in a four rotor in there. There's a lot of heat management going on there. Matsui, he drives this car, usually does pretty well in it, but uh, he didn't seem to be feeling it yesterday, so it didn't perform too well. I uh, hope it does well today because this car's a bit of a weapon. Ugh, while we're here, I'll show you this. So normally, normally the pits are way down there, but what they've done here today is they're using the top part of the course as pits in order to keep the spectators away from the drivers and you know social distancing and all that so the start line instead of coming all the way up the hill coming around then going around here and down they take the shortcut 
and go straight down the hill and the, the start line is down there. So this shortcut is normally used by people who are just practicing Minami, but this time they're doing it for real. And you can see there's the cones there, lead car, chase car, have to take a different lane. Here's Naoki's tent. They did a crash yesterday in the warm-up run of his battle, believe it or not. Uh, one of the suspension parts snapped. Because uh, Minami is very rough on parts. So that was kind of unfortunate. What are these shirts they've got? Glittery shirts. Shirts are kira Hmm. Uh, Noki driving the S15, Silvia 2JZ. So that seems to be the most common setup this weekend. S15 with 2JZ. <laughs> Bit of a fan of Kitawaka's driving as well. Oh, hi, yo! You're going to eat? You're so! You're going to eat? You're going to eat? Yeah, I'm going to eat. You're the Tanso champion, right? Yes, yes, yes. Kitawaka was last year's solo run champion. But... He's on the other side. Yes, yes. He needs to be the tandem champion this year, so... Oh, I like this engine setup on Sasayama's car. It's a really angry looking, I mean, performance is one thing, but this engine just looks cool. Really, really, really high mount Garrett. Alright, wastegate straight out the top. So, fairly minimal on the front there. It's got the, I think it's the Tomei alternator relocation kit. So, it gets rid of the tensioner and makes the belt shorter. Pretty short intercooler runners. Coolers mounted up front. Yeah, this car does pretty good, but it's still a fairly new build for him. So, he might not be all that used to it just yet. Speaking of 2JZS15, we've got Yokoi and Suenaga driving these. And what else can you say? It's Yokoi. Another 2JZS15, Utsumi. Setup is a little bit different on this compared to most S15s. He drives very strong on the accelerator. Maybe not always that great in solo runs, but can be very aggressive in tandem when he gets it right. You can see they've all laid their tires out front of the uh, pits to get marked. This is Semi Tanaka's again, another S15 2JZ. He did uh, really well yesterday, he got first in qualifying. Seems to be really used to the car today. Here's an interesting one, S14 Zenki with the non-VVTi SR20. So, not the most standard car these days, this is run by Muriyama. Uh, so it can be fairly good in battles, but maybe it's, maybe just not quite enough these days? I don't know. And one interesting thing is, these are the rear tyres he's running. See, they've got kind of a cheetah pattern on them, and the reason for that is because they are actually Gymkhana tires. It's the Dunlop Durezza uh, Beta 02s in 25540. So the first time he's run them is this weekend. On the front it has the standard uh, Durezza 
you know, S tires. Didn't do that great yesterday. We'll see how he does today. 326 power wheels. He runs the uh, variable valve timing SR20. And has the full 326 power kit. And it even uses the 326 power extended alloy wheel nuts. So even though this is a fairly stancy looking car, still performs pretty good. The Daigo's Supra. There's a lot of uh, stuff on this to talk about. It's 2JZ, uh, Naprec high flow head. It's got this, uh, how would you say it? European style motor mount, billet motor mount from HGK. Also built by Daigo, Matsuyama's Supra. So fairly similar. It's missing some of the cooler parts that Daigo's car has. But same sort of thing, 2JZ. Slightly updated body kit as well. The rear end on it has these sort of Le Mans style wings on the side. I feel like a drink now. Yes. Someone on the internet was asking about Daigo's wheels. 285-35-20. So he is running 20s. One good thing about running bigger wheels is because they have a larger rolling diameter, they've got more rubber on them. So technically the tires will last longer. It doesn't always work out that way, but it can. Also obviously the downside is the wheel is bigger. Ibino's S14. This car is kind of set up in a weird way. It has an extremely wide front track, like more so than you'd normally see in a car like this. And people keep pointing this out on the live stream. He's had the double stack fenders on there. So there's a fender and then another fender and then tape. Because you're not allowed to have wheels sticking out of the guard. That's a regulation. So it looks kind of weird and people keep pointing it out. I don't know why they haven't made some nicer looking ones, but, you know. Here's one of the cars in the 265 series tire regulation that you wouldn't expect. This is Kazumi's uh, JZX100. That would mean that this car is set up to be very light, and it is. Uh, he's got weight saving everywhere he possibly can. So he's got wave rotor brakes, Willwood brakes on the front. Like everything on this car has been set up to be light. And I asked him why, you know, you'd try to build a lightweight, lightweight car out of a JZX100. And I don't know, he, he just said he likes it for some reason. So very small wheelwood brakes. This car also has a lot more aero effects than most cars here as well. Kind of an odd setup, but it does well sometimes. Kiguchi's C33 Laurel. This one has 2JZ as well, so. One of the lower budget cars here, you can see it's not all carbon fiber for the ducting. It's just like a plastic sheeting. But it does have a nice retro look to it. And the best paint here in D1. So this car here, the driver is a guy called Takeshi Mogi. And the last time he did D1 Grand Prix was in 2007. And he's done various small competitions since then, but decided to come back into Dion Grand Prix with this. Uh, winter's rear end. It's a pretty vanilla S15 build. He did well yesterday in qualifying, but didn't do quite so well in the actual battles. Hi. 
そっちの方がいい作業中作業中に息子ですか息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子です息子In settings, the car handled better when it wasn't quite so wide, so he's gone for this look, which、uh, in Japan is known as train fitment because it looks like a train. You know, like the wheels on a train are all tucked in. This is Tadokoro's A86.、Uh, he used to run one of these with a 13B turbo, but now 2JZ, like most of the cars here, and it's been fairly heavily modified. Obviously, a stock A86 can't really handle the kind of power and、uh, abuse you need to run in Dion Grand Prix these days. You can see it through the rear there. It has a Watts Link rear end. And it's a diff out of、uh, Estima, aka a Tarago in Australia or a、uh, Previa in the United States. Something else that's cool he did since last round,、uh, he took the rear end of the car off on the wall at Okuibuki, so they made a carbon fiber panel. So there's no lights here, that's just carbon fiber, but he's got the lights down here, which、uh, is good enough for regulation. Didn't really look that great today in practice. But we'll see how he does in qualifying. Also, running Watanabe wheels like any A86 should, but in 17 inch instead of like 13 or 14, like you normally see. Alright, last car before we're gonna go back and start doing commentary. So、it's got an infinity badge on it. It's actually a skyline, but they've gone for the、uh, infinity look just to make it look cool. So, this car being driven by this guy, Sobagiri, and he's the youngest guy, he's 24. The car itself has, and it's a little bit disassembled right now, but it's the VR38 from a R35, and it's a two door coupe. Rear wheel drive. So, I guess this is the,、uh, the Skyline GTST as it should have been. Maybe not with the GTR engine, but yeah. He had a really big crash on the Friday practice session, but they managed to fix it. It's still a little bit bent, but it looks okay. So, this is the Judge Tower. Sits here, it's got the best view of Minami. This is where the commentators sit, and they've all got their own bride seat to sit on. Yeah, these are necessary this weekend. The portable air conditioner they've got blowing into here. Over there is where they have the DOS system, but I am not allowed to show you that. This is the spotting area. All the spotters get to sit over here. Uh, they've got TVs that show the scores. Actually, you can just see it in the background there. It's a bit hard to see in this light, but it shows the regular score and also、uh, a score breakdown so the spotters know exactly what's going on. And then also, the current scores are here. So, all the spotters will sit in these seats here. And this Kuma Kubo is here. This gap in the fence is where I used to shoot a lot of photos. And if you've seen some of my older videos, that's where they were shot as well. I'm gonna go back to the broadcast area and get ready. Oh, by the way, here's Kawasaki. Today's BBQ. 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 Tire smoke. Tire guy. Tire guy. Okay, this is my setup here. My microphone I use for live streaming. And if you look outside, there's the first corner over there. Here's the top 16. Right there. Ah,、oh, that's it, we finished. There's the award ceremony down there, and it's actually starting to rain right now.
Obviously, I couldn't do YouTube while I was doing the commentary. So I'm going to put some highlights in right now. Here we go. First battle. Whoa! The super tapped the wall on that run. Sunaga once again. He's ice cold in the chase. He's going in for the kill, driving the knife in for many years. Here we go. First battle between these two. Look at this entry from Yokoi. We are getting sketchier by the battle. Could almost read the sponsors on his roof there. Nakamura in the chase. Nakamura leaving marks on his door. Oh, that is actually a collision there. Okay, so Nakamura has broken something in the rear there. Is he going to be able to shake off Kohashi? Watch Kohashi at the bottom of the track. Did Kohashi actually collide with Fujino over the jump? There it is. There it is. Even score in the final between Suenaga and Kohashi. An even 202. Even score. We're going to be running these guys one more time. Here comes this fight. Here we go. Over the crest. And with that, we have a result. Suenaga just sending it in a bit too hard. Kohashi completing the course with no problem. Not the way you want to see it end, but there it is. Oh, it looks sad. Ali, look at the look at the tires from where he was sliding sideways. Not sure what pressures they run, but as you can see, it's still pretty low. Although you very rarely see these guys roll beads. Not the winner, but he's the winner to me. It just started raining now. Look at these clouds. This happened yesterday too. It just started raining right as the event ended. The last thing I wanted to do before I left Ebisu was just check up on the beer can. There it is. Because we're going to be taking it from Ebisu to a workshop and giving it a bit of a freshen up. Look at the poor thing sitting here in the weeds. So it hasn't run since October. No, wait, it was Automatsuri last year. There you go. November, I think, 9th was the last time it ran. And that was when I blew the turbo on it. So I just rage parked it down here. And spider webs on it. At least the front tires still have air in them. Let's see if it's been leaking anything over the winter. No. It's all okay. Front bumper is still here, although we'll probably be changing that. Whatever was in the back, I don't even know what's in that box, but it's still in there at least. Did I leave it open? No, I don't have the key on me. But it's all still in there. Some wheels and stuff. Where's the thing? There we go. Yeah, there's still an engine there. Yeah, it still has fresh coolant. Okay, I mean, I could almost drive this if it didn't have a blown turbo. There's a bird nest in it. And it looks like it's not being used anymore, I think. It's already late summer, so if that was used for baby birds, I mean, they're probably long gone by now, so. It's a little bit low, but that's okay. Uh, brake fluid is there, clutch fluid looks okay. This should just roll straight under the truck, I reckon. Brakes are rusty as hell. It's got moss on it. There's mosquitoes. Nice. So what's the plan for the beer can? Well, it's been an Ebisu car for the past several years. 
I think it's going to stay an Ebisu car. What we need to do is sort it out so it can handle two days of Matsuri three times a year. I need to be able to come up here and just drive it whenever I want. And also, Ebisu has the EDS Ebisu Drift Series. Make it so it's, I guess, legal to run in that competition. I mean, it's already got like a bolt-in roll cage, but it does need things like brake lights and some other small things like that, maybe harnesses and things like that to make it good for a competition. So it's not gonna be a high level car, obviously. And to the RB fans, don't worry, it's staying RB20. And if anything, we need to make it sound like an RB20 should sound, you know, that real chainsaw sound. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a bit haphazard making it around, you know, my other job doing the commentary for D1 Grand Prix, but I just wanted to show you some of the behind the scenes stuff and also talk about the plans for the beer can. The JZX100 should be going into a workshop in the next week or so. I know I've been saying that for a while, but it will. Uh, also, the Beans 86 is now enjoyable to drive. So we'll be heading back to Tsukuruma Circuit as soon as possible to give that a drive too. So give these videos a watch too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Flat tire. The inside just shredded. I never checked it. I gotta wait and uh, get rescued. Yay.